Well, that was a uh, quite a race at Bristol, wasn't it? Anyways, what is up everybody? Thomas for each 12th man fan here. As you can see, we have a little bit of a different thing going on with the recap videos. You can see now that I have my phone set up here on this stand. It's on the edge of the train table. So I don't have to hold the camera the entire time. And also you get to see my shirt and I also got my hat. I have a Kyle Larson championship shirt on and I have my Chase Elliott Hooters hat. But anyways, what a race at Bristol this week. Holy cow. Wow, that was that was quite the week of racing. But anyway, starting us off, first we had the Truck Series race. I didn't watch it because Thursday Night Football was on with the Chargers and the Chiefs, which uh, the Chiefs ended up winning, but it was a great game anyway. I missed the truck race, but Ty Majeski would get his first ever win. Congratulations to Ty Majeski. So yeah, that was the truck race. Really not much to say there, but Ty Majeski punches his ticket to the championship four. And the next Truck Series race will be at Talladega. So that is going to be a wild one. We all know that. But I probably won't be able to watch it because uh, I think I'm going to be at the Linden Model Train Show that day on Saturday. Because uh, the Linden Model Train Show is on, uh, the first, is on like the first weekend of October. The first and the second. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it for the truck race. And now let's move on to the Xfinity Series race. This would be the regular season finale for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And this race did have its moments. It was a pretty entertaining race overall. And yeah, really, really entertaining for the most part. And unfortunately, Sheldon Creed once again had a really good race car, but for, but of course, something had to happen to him. Something has to happen to Sheldon Creed every single time. Like, even when I went to Portland, he had a really good race car, but then he got caught up in a wreck. Like, that's just the luck that he has this season. And I honestly wish that he won that race at Darlington, but uh, what can you do? Well, anyways, that was basically that, and... And in the end, it came down to Brandon Jones and Noah Gregson. And despite Brandon Jones' best efforts, Noah Gregson would pick up his sixth win of the 2022 Xfinity Series season and would end off the regular season with one more win in the regular season, obviously. But also, when he celebrated, he threw up on himself, I heard. I really didn't catch that when I first watched it live. But, but, but you know, my texting friend, Kyle said that he threw up on himself when he won. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what that, that's all about. But anyways, he climbed the fence and everything. He also, uh, he also, uh, he also chugged a beer from the side like this. That was, that was kind of cool. But, yeah, I really like Noah Gregson. Cannot wait for this guy to be in the Cup Series. And, honestly, I think he might be my championship pick. I'm not gonna lie. He might be my championship pick this year. He might just be our Xfinity Series champion. Anyways, the NASCAR Xfinity Series regular season championship would go to A.J. Allmendinger. So congratulations to A.J. Allmendinger for winning the regular season championship once again because I think he won it last year. So this is like his second straight. This is his second straight regular season championship in the Xfinity Series. So congratulations to, congratulations to A.J., really great guy. But, uh, yeah, really nothing much else to say about that. Moving on to the guys that made the playoffs. Ryan Sieg made the playoffs for the, for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. So that was, uh, that was good. And then Riley Herbst also made it in. And Daniel Hemrick. And I think, I, yeah, I think Sam Mayer also made it too. But, uh, yeah, I believe those are the guys that made the playoffs. And Landon Castle, unfortunately, would miss out. Really unfortunate for Landon Castle. He had a pretty okay season. I, he honestly could have made the playoffs. 
He had chances to do so, but it just really didn't happen. Now let's get on to the Cup Series on Saturday. Now, Eric Almirola would start on the pole. That was, that was very big, seeing Eric Almirola win the pole. But anyways, this race overall, where do I even begin? Where do I even begin with this race? I don't even know. It was so crazy. I don't even know where to start. Well, first of all, a lot of tire issues. Tire issues, engine failures. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I seriously don't know what to say. I literally don't know what to say, but... Yeah, we had a lot of guys that had problems. Harrison Burton, I think he spun out a couple times. And uh, Ryan Blaney would have an issue as well. I believe he had a tire go down and he had like an engine problem or something. Martin Tricks Jr. had an engine problem in this race. And Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch, one of the playoff contenders would blow an engine at the worst possible time for him to have an engine go away like that. Oh my God. And you want to know what? Kyle Busch would be out of the race. Possibly being eliminated. Like this first round has just been awful for Kyle Busch. I mean you go back to Darlington. Had a very good race car. He was dominating. Had a really good car. But then late race caution comes out for Cody Ware of course. But then his engine expires. And then at Kansas has problems on pit road. Spins out. In the trioval grass. It is, and now this. At one of his best race tracks. Blows an engine. Possibly ending his playoff chances. And his last chance to win a championship with Joe Gibbs Racing. Wow. Kyle Busch just cannot catch a break this year. He can't. He seriously can't. But also, more playoff drivers would have trouble in this race. Daniel Suarez would spin, and there would be a wreck there. Alex Bowman had an engine issue, but he already was in. He already got locked in before that happened, so that's good for Bowman. And uh, Joey Logano did have problems in this race, yes. But unfortunately for me, he was already locked in at the time, so it really didn't matter. But anyways, the ending of this race would be down to a late race caution. And Chris Busher, Chris Busher would be the leader. Now, before this, Brad Keselowski was out front, and then he has a flat tire. People say that NASCAR should have thrown the caution for that. And because Christopher Bell, who did who took the lead, then later had a flat tire. That brought out the yellow, but people are just wondering, why didn't Brad Keselowski get a caution? Again, NASCAR controversies at their finest. But anyways, Brad Keselowski, flat tire, but then another RFK car comes into the mix, and it's Chris Buescher. Buescher would take off on the final lap, and man, I was cheering for Buescher. I was like, come on, Buescher, come on! And you want to know what happened? Chase Elliott, he was running in second. He tried his hardest, but it did not work. Chris Busher, Chris Busher would win at Bristol. I mean, I knew RFK Racing would eventually get that first win this season. But I did not think it would be at Bristol. I thought it would be at Daytona or Talladega, maybe Atlanta. But holy cow. And also, the Fastenal curse is officially broken. Because there was some sort of curse that happened. Because uh, some sort of a certain YouTuber, Black Flags Matter, did something with Fastenal. I don't know what it was. But ever since then, Fastenal just could not get anything done. They The Fastenal cars just could not win. But now, Chris Buescher, the curse is finally broken. Fastenal finally goes to victory lane. And Brad Kozlowski gets his first ever win as a team owner. That is truly wonderful. Very happy for Brad Kozlowski's organization and very happy for Chris Buescher 
This is Chris Bush. This is Chris Buescher's second Career Cup Series win because at Pocono in 2016, he would win because of a fog because of fog covering the racetrack. They would they would call the race because it was too bad to race because the weather was way too bad for them to race. And Chris Buescher would end up winning that race for Front Row Motorsports. And that'd be Front Row Motorsports' last win until Michael McDowell won the Daytona 500 last year. But anyways, Chris Buescher, finally a winner at Roush. He moved here in 2020. And he's been with this organization for two seasons previously. And this is his third year at Roush. And finally, finally, he gets it done. And Roush finally breaks a winless streak as their last win before Chris Buescher won this race was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. winning at Daytona in July in 2017. That was their last win before this one. So it has been a good while since Roush has gone to victory lane. So congratulations to Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher finally getting it done. Though I definitely do feel bad for Brad Keselowski. Keselowski looked like it finally would happen that he would be able to get a win. Which Brad Keselowski has not had a winless season in a very long time. I think his first winless season was like his first full-time season with Team Penske. So, yeah, because I know he won in uh, 2011. He did, I don't think he won anything in 2010. So, I think 2010 might have been his final win. His regular, his... It might have been his you know, his last winless season. Maybe it might happen this year because uh, it feels like Keselowski might not win, but he does have another chance coming up because we are going back to Talladega and he is good at Talladega. So RFK could get two wins. He, they, he could, they could get both of their cars. Both their cars could have at least one win. But also we have to address this. We have had 19... 19 different winners. 19. Holy cow. 19 different winners in one season. Wow. And that is the highest we've ever been. Because I believe we had 19 different winners in 2001. That was the last time that there were that many winners. Like, it truly feels like we're going back to, like, to going back to, like, the older days of NASCAR where we had, like, all these different drivers win races and the competition was much more competitive. Like, that's what they were trying to accomplish with this new car. And, man, has it worked. The parody has just been absolutely wild this season. Like, wow. Honestly, I don't know if there's really much for any. I don't think there's really anything else for me to say. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Congratulations to RFK. Congratulations to Chris Buescher. Finally, finally getting that first win of the season and getting that second career win and that win that he's been longing to get with a competitive team. Because uh, Front Row Motorsports, when he, went, when, he, when, he, when he was with them in 2016... Yeah, nothing really too impressive by that 34 team from what I remember. I really don't remember anything from his rookie se from his rookie season. I mean, what a what a journey it's been for Chris Buescher. Winning the Xfinity Series title in 2015 and then and then going to Front Row Motorsports in 2016, winning a race with them. Then goes to JTG Doherty Racing for a couple of years. He doesn't really accomplish anything there. Besides a couple top 10s and such. And then he moves to Roush in 2020. Which uh, he did have some more good results in 2021. He won a stage at Homestead. And now in 2022. Now with the new RFK Roush Fenway Keselowski rebrand. He finally got it done. And oh yeah, also he had he did he did a barrel roll in that in that 17 car this year at Charlotte, which probably had to be one of the most craziest crashes this year in the Cup Series. But yeah, congratulations to Chris Busher. Really, nothing else to say. A chaotic race at Bristol, and now the next stop for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs will be at Texas. Whoopee. 
That race is going to suck. I know it. I mean, the All-Star Race barely put on a show. I mean, how could you think that with, like, just 20 cars in the All-Star Race and then match that with 36 cars at Texas in a regular season race, there's really not going to be that much of a difference. It's going to be a single foul bore fest. I really don't much. I don't really expect much from that race. It's going to be absolutely boring. But anyways, let's move on to the drivers that got eliminated. So of course, so of course, let's get to the guys that got eliminated. First guy that got eliminated was Austin Dillon. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people expected Austin Dillon to be eliminated in the first round. I thought. I think I thought he would have made the second round. I, I thought he might have had the chance. Besides, when he's in the playoffs, he in 2020 he was able to make it past the first round. Had a had a spectacular first round. But then he just kind of fell off. But, you know, Austin, he did have the capability of doing it. But, unfortunately, it didn't happen. And, unfortunately, Tyler Reddick would also be out in the first round, too. That That's a bummer. I kind of wanted Tyler Reddick to advance. And now let's get into the big names. Kevin Harvick has been eliminated in the first round. And this first round has just been an absolute disaster for Kevin Harvick. I mean... Going back to Darlington, where his car just literally caught on fire out of nowhere. And then going to Kansas, and then getting caught up in a wreck early. Going into a must-win situation at Bristol. And a bad pit stop on that last caution absolutely screwed them over. So, Harvick's run would, would officially come to an end in the first round. And the biggest surprise to be eliminated in the first round, Kyle Busch. Who would have ever thought that Kyle Busch would be out in the first round? Not me. I thought he would maybe at least make the second round, but I did not expect him to be out this early. Even if his season it was this bad, I did not expect him to be eliminated this, this early. That was just crazy. But... Yeah, there are your four drivers eliminated. And now we go to the round of 12. Three races. We have Texas, which will probably be boring. But then after that, we go from the most boring racetrack to the most exciting racetracks. Talladega and the Charlotte Roval. This is honestly mostly a wild card round. Like Texas, you're probably expecting, you know, your Chase Elliott's, your, jo your Joey Logano's, your Ryan Blaney's. Like, you're expecting those guys to win. But then we go to Talladega and the Charlotte Roval. At Talladega, it's literally anyone's race. Literally anyone. Literally anyone. Even someone that's not in the playoffs could win that race. Like, it's literally anyone's race. And then we have the Charlotte Roval, which you could make an argument that it's going to be Chase Elliott that will win that race. But, you know, road courses are kind of wild cards too, you know? You really may never know. Someone could sneak a win like a Chris Bush or, or a Brad Kozlowski or, um, oh boy, there's some, oh yeah, like Daniel Suarez. Like you, you, you could expect someone like that to steal a win at a road course. But yeah, I'm mostly picking Chase Elliott to win that race. I'm hoping he does because I at least want him to get at least one road course win because he's not won on road courses at all this year. So hopefully he can uh, turn that around and at least get one road course win for this year. But hey, that's just me. I'm a Chase Elliott fan. What do you expect? But anyways, yes, that's going to do it for this one. Recapping Bristol, probably the most entertaining race at Bristol I've ever seen in a long time. It was exciting. It was entertaining. It was wild. It was chaotic. It's honestly what, in my opinion what I think Bristol is. It's a racetrack that, honestly, you put all these guys at a, in a small area, in a small coliseum, not as small as the LA Coliseum, but like a bigger coliseum, like a bigger coliseum, but still a very short track with high banking and high speeds. This is what you're going to get. And I certainly think that this next-gen card's definitely delivered at this racetrack. So, not all the short tracks are bad with this car. Hopefully, Martinsville is better in the round of eight. I'm not getting my hopes up, but hopefully, Martinsville will be better than it was in the spring. But anyways, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I have a lot of other things 
coming. Of course, I'm going to try to get my NFL Week 3 predictions out. Out. I'm, I'm trying to upload it tomorrow. I'll get it filmed tonight, and then I'll upload it tomorrow before the Steelers-Browns game. And uh, My Little Pony, Make Your Mark, the new series is also coming out this week, so cannot wait for that. And of course, the one-year anniversary for My Little Pony, A New Generation, is also happening this week on September 24th on Saturday. I'll be re-watching it. And of course, I'll make a little video saying happy anniversary and everything. And oh, what else do I have planned? Oh, I'm trying to think. What else do I have planned? Is that it? I think that might be it. But I really don't know what I'm I really don't know where I'm going with this. I really don't know. I don't know anything else I have planned because uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. Also, Cards on the Road came out on Disney Plus last week, I believe. So I'm going to try to do a video on that. I don't know how, if I'll have the time to. But let me just say if I don't, it's a good series. It's a really good series. I've been a fan of the Cars franchise ever since I was little. You know, Lightning McQueen, Mater, Kachow, I'm all about that. I I love the Pixar Cars franchise. Like, the first one is great. The second one is okay. The third one was amazing. And now we have this new uh, Road Trip series that came out. And it's a blast to watch. I totally recommend it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's gonna do it for this. That's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you next week for my next recap for Texas to kick off the round of 12. And of course, be sure to look out for the week three predictions for NFL. I'm gonna try to get that out. I'm gonna try to get my My Little Pony New Generation one one year anniversary video out. And also, I think I'm gonna try to do a mini review on the Maker Mark series. I'll try to do a video on that, but I'm probably not going to do that until I finish the series because I think I heard that these episodes are going to be like 20 minutes long. So I don't think I'll be able to watch all the episodes tomorrow. Not not tomorrow. I don't think I'll be able to watch all the episodes when they come out, but I'll I'll try to like watch a couple of them and then I'll try to watch a more couple of them the next day. So I'm going to try to do something like that or maybe I'll do it weekly. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But anyways, this has gone on long too far. And this has gone on long enough. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!